Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 14th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Tennis Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And today, second Tuesday of the month, so we do have updates from Microsoft and Adobe. Total of 90 plus different vulnerabilities that Microsoft patches this month. Out of those vulnerabilities, there are two that I think deserve special attention. The first vulnerability, CVE 2017-84-64, it is already being exploited in the wild, according to Microsoft, even though details about the vulnerabilities have not been released publicly yet. The problem here are Windows shortcuts. Now in Windows, these are small files. One of the things that's represented inside the file is a link to an icon that's being used to display the link. Now, if this file turns out to be malicious, then code execution happens. I do remember uh, reading something a month or so ago, and I think I mentioned it in the podcast about uh, image files uh, being confused for script files. Can't find it right now, uh, but there may actually have been some details already been made public here. Now, this isn't the first time that these link files uh, cause problems. Remember the famous Stuxnet vulnerability for example, and to exploit this. An attacker would, uh, of course, first of all, uh, give uh, the victim a USB stick, for example, and just by looking at the directory on the USB stick, this vulnerability would be triggered. This can also be executed remotely. If I'm sending the victim a link to an SMB file share, then uh, this vulnerability will be triggered as well if uh, this file share contains a malicious link file. The second vulnerability, CVE 2017-8543, it's also already being exploited and it really has sort of all the ingredients that made Eternal Blue and WannaCry such a big deal. Again, it's SMB file shares that are at risk here. In this case, a malicious search message will execute arbitrary code. This apparently does not use any authentication, so an unauthenticated user can execute arbitrary code and become an administrator on the remote system. Exactly the problem that we had with uh, WannaCry and Eternal Blue also old operating systems back to Windows XP are vulnerable. Now, Microsoft actually decided here to preempt uh, some of the issues that led to WannaCry and already today released an update for Windows XP. So again, they consider this vulnerability severe enough to patch these older operating systems again please apply this patch quickly. And I hope by now you already blocked port 445 both ways. Both of these vulnerabilities being exploited in the the wild and both of them are exploitable via SMB. The icon one via remote file shares. So here the client is the vulnerable part and this search vulnerability of course would be exploited on a server. Now, while Microsoft states that uh, these vulnerabilities had not been publicly disclosed, they were actually part of the NSA data dump, just like Eternal Blue. I just don't think that actual exploit code had been leaked yet. And at least up to this point, uh, this should fix all of the leaked vulnerabilities. However, of course, uh, there may be more to come from places like shadow brokers. In addition to these already exploited uh, remote code execution vulnerabilities. There are three vulnerabilities that are being addressed uh, in the June update that disclose information and can be used to bypass things like, uh, for example, address layout uh, randomization. So uh, these vulnerabilities make exploitation easier. One of them uh, was mentioned in the NSA leak, if I remember uh, correctly. Now, by 
by themselves, of course, uh, they aren't a remote code execution vulnerabilities, but they make it possible to exploit some of these other vulnerabilities. And your cert is warning about a DDoS botnet that it attributes to North Korea. Overall, other than the attribution, nothing really too special about this particular botnet. It does use your usual set of older vulnerabilities in order to take over systems and then installs botnet agents on these systems. The exploits being listed here are mostly client exploits. So uh, this is something that would likely be exploited via either malvertising or malicious emails. The DDoS tool itself does have the usual capabilities of various reflective denial of service attacks. Your cert does list a set of uh, indicators of compromise with its advisory. So in particular, if you're running a larger network, you probably want to take a quick look, look to see if uh, this is found in your network. There's also a snort rule that in particular detects uh, the command and control traffic. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.